everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. I hope that you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. Check out the pink of that curtain. Oh my God, I wanna eat it. I don't know what it is with this filter right now, but um, <laughs> I'm loving it. It's actually, no it is. I guess the sun is coming in right now. It's just gorgeous. Anyway, thank you for hanging out with me today. I have something really important I wanna to talk to you about. It's relationships and it's people, because I think a lot of us underestimate how important people are in terms of our spiritual walk and our spiritual journey. But before talking about that, I just wanna encourage you, if you have not yet subscribed, please drop down really quickly, hit that subscribe button so that we can stay connected, source and spirit and the energies have been making it clear that we have a lot to do this year, 2018 and beyond. And as we all continue to shift and awaken, we should be connected. To that end, if you would share this video around the internet, I would really appreciate it because I just want to be able to reach out and connect with more people. I also want to thank my patrons on Patreon. You guys have my heart okay. And I want to also tell you that at the end of April, this month, 2018, I am doing a class called Channeling Angels, where you can learn how to do just that. And if you want to learn more about that, you can look uh, in my description. There is a link. Click on it. It gives you all the information. Please register. We already have a good group of students, but there's always room for you. Now, in today's video, what I want to talk with you about are the 15 signs that someone has got to go. Somebody is got to go. They've worn out their welcome. But before we talk about the 15 signs, I want you to know why this is important. It's important because the five people who get your minutes, the five people with whom you spend most of your time are the five people that you end up resembling the most, that you end up in effect somewhat becoming. You become like them because you're with them so often. Too many of us are not mindful of the people that we allow into our space. And some of these people are damaging. They don't give a damn. They are narcissists. They are takers and users, or they are unconscious. They don't know that they're hurting us or that they're harming us in any way. And yet, for whatever reason, we allow them into our space. You have to know that people are energy, just as your energy, just as I'm energy, just as all things are energy. And when energy impacts energy or comes into contact with energy, both energies are changed as a result of that interaction. That's how spiritual energy works. And so when you and I sit down for coffee, I change you based on my vibration and you change me. That's why I'm so very selective and particular about who I actually give my minutes to because I am protective of my path. I'm protective of my purpose. I'm protective of my body, my health, my time. There's only so many days in a week. There's only so many hours in a day. So I'm super protective of that because I know energy impacts and talks to and changes energy. And when we're hanging out in relationships that are toxic, when we're hanging around people who put us down, are passive aggressive, are sabotaging us on some level, then we are complicit, you see. We are partnering with our own derailing and our own delay, and we don't want that. We only have this one life as Crystal Ann Compton. I've only got this one iteration to do what I came here to do with this particular body, mind, and spirit, and set of skills. And if I don't get to doing it, I'm wasting my time. Some people are real big time wasters, aren't they? They are. Some of these people who should be weeded out of the garden of our life, they're kind of on the down low. We may not know right off the top of our head, if we were to think about it, that they are doing damage to us that they are delaying us in some way because they're doing it in a real subtle and sometimes even manipulative way. So let's go through the 15 different signs that somebody has to go. And as I explain these to you, and I'm going to be reading them, they're right here on my computer. As I explain these to you, I want you to be thinking about the people in your life and thinking about whether some of this sounds familiar, 
or some of these characteristics and traits are showing up in the relationships in your life. And if they are, then we'll talk about what to do at the end of this video. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on each one of these things, but listen, because again, some of these people are in your life on the down low and you need to know because you need to make some intentional choices about that. All right. The first sign that somebody in your life has got to go is they compete with you. Maybe this is in beauty. Maybe this is in business. Maybe this is in knowledge, but anytime you say to them, Oh my gosh, I've just accomplished this great thing. They rush on in and say, Oh, well, I already did that or I'm doing that too. And, and I'm going to do it at a higher level and I'm going to do it better than if you've got somebody in your life who's competing with you all the time, that's probably because they're a bit jealous of what it is that you're doing. And if they're jealous then they're not supportive, they're not holding space for your energy, for your spirit and for your work. And they gotta go. The second sign somebody may need to get out of your life is they withhold knowing that it hurts you. They withhold knowing that it hurts you. I was in a relationship like this for a few years with somebody and it was volatile. And I don't know why I spent that much time in this particular relationship. That's a whole other Oprah we don't have to get into, but I was in this relationship and it was volatile and we would fight and we'd break up. And then I would try to make it right. And I try to make overtures, but this person would withhold himself from me. He wouldn't answer my calls. He wouldn't answer my texts. He wouldn't make time to make it right. Or if he knew that I was needing something from him, like it was really important that I got this bit of information or I got this bit of energy of love. He withheld it. And he did that because people who withhold want to control you. They want to have power over you. They want you to feel things when they want you to feel things as opposed to when you're actually feeling them. It's a form of gaslighting and it's a form of manipulation. If somebody in your life is withholding when they know that you need them, boom, they gotta go. Number three, they look for conversational areas to insert passive and not so passive judgments of you. Meaning you're sitting down with your friends. You're just having a conversation and you're like, you know, I just went out and I did this thing and she inserts herself and she's like, well, yeah, you always do that though. Don't you? I mean, you're always making a bad decision like that. How'd it work out? Passive aggressive or not. So passive aggressive, maybe just aggressive aggressive, but it's happening in the mundane times. It's happening when you really should just be able to have a conversation with somebody and yet they're judging you. They're looking for ways it would seem to insert these judgments of you. If you got somebody like that in your life, they got to go. Number four, they're not happy for you when you succeed. Instead, when you've achieved something, they say, yeah, that's great and all, but what about me? I used to have a friend like this. As I started shifting and changing and awakening and taking on new projects. And even when I would meet new people, great people, there'd be maybe five seconds of, oh, that's really awesome for you. And then there'd be one hour of why isn't this happening for me though? I try hard too. I work hard too. I've got all these gifts. I've got all these talents. How come it's not happening for me? Have you ever had a friend who just wasn't happy when you achieved something just wasn't happy for you when you were happy with friends like that? Who needs enemies? They got to go. Number five, they emulate and copy you and they also demand a great deal of your time. In other words, they're a bit parasitical. They're with you. And often these people don't even know why they're with you. They just sense something in you, a light, a vibration, and they like it. They don't know why they like it, but they want more of it. I used to call this people who wanted to co-opt my shine when I was happy, when I was productive, when I was out there doing what I came here to do. They just wanted to be around me. And over time, they wanted to be me. They took on my mannerisms. They took on my characteristics. They changed themselves to be more like me. And at first I said, well, you know, 
Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but over time you'll see this is not a healthy relationship. This is not a relationship based on energetic reciprocity. This is about them glomming on to me and taking from me my energy and my time. And is that serving me? Is it even serving them? Usually the answer is no. And in that case, that person has got to go. Number six, they are unable to admit fault when they are clearly in the wrong. We don't need to talk about this one very long, do we? We all know somebody who can just never say, yeah, you're right, my bad, I totally did that. Totally effed that up, totally, and I'm sorry about that from the bottom of my heart. That's my bad. They just can't do it. They seem to be humanly incapable of it. Well, I don't have time for that, do you? When I do something wrong in an equal relationship, I'm gonna say, I blew that, and I'm sorry, and I love you, and let's make it right. And if you're hanging out with people who don't have the capacity to do that, well then, they might have to go. And incidentally, it's people who can't admit that they do wrong who tend to do wrong quite a lot. Next, number seven, they spin their knowledge or their lack of knowledge so that they appear to be an authority in just about everything. I like to call this the Cliff Clavin syndrome. They know everything about this subject. They've been to that place. They read that book. They talked to that person. They are an authority on everything. This kind of person is no longer willing to adapt, to shift, to grow, to evolve, and to change. They're no longer willing to be a student of life. And of course, if you are awakening and shifting, and you are absorbing all of this new information, this truth, and you are evolving, and you hang out with somebody who's a know-it-all and who's constantly saying, yeah, you know what, Crystal, I don't think that's what, I don't think that word means what you think it means, or oh, you know what, Crystal, I've been there, you don't really need, that serves to delay you. You want to be with people who are open. You want to be with people who are willing to be surprised and who are willing to also support you as you are willing to be surprised and as you are curious on your journey. Curiosity, openness, receiving, that's, that, those are spiritual characteristics and those are the kind of characteristics you want to see in your friends. And if you don't, think about ditching that relationship. Number eight, they condescend to you. And when you call them on it, oh, they say, oh, I didn't mean it like that. And you're taking it wrong. You're so sensitive. To condescend means they talk down to you. Oh, you must not know that. So let me just tell you, little girl, how the world works out here. And if you don't understand that, I don't know what's wrong with you. Condescend to you. And when you say, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't talk to me like that. They say, whoa, whoa, What's wrong with you? I wasn't trying to condescend to you. I wasn't talking down to you. You're so sensitive. I'm just talking to you. Gaslighting, crazy making. Those people are invested in their own experience and in their own ego. And they are also often narcissists. Narcissists love to gaslight and to just get your goat. They love to talk down to you because they feel superior to you. Some narcissists can hide this to some degree, but at some point they always tip their hand. And when you call on it, call them on it, they're like, not me. I didn't mean it that way. You're just taking it that way. What's wrong with you? They gotta go. Number nine, they game play. That one relationship I was in, lots of game play. Again, text me back, doesn't text me back. Need this from you, doesn't give it to you knows how to be in a healthy relationship and yet chooses to dick around, mess around, play games, manufacture drama. I don't have time for drama. I don't have time for drama. And it's not just a function of my age. I was over drama many, many, many years ago. Drama is a distraction, y'all. It takes away from the things we came here to do. It may be fascinating for a while. It may get our adrenaline up, but it is a waste of time. And if you're in a relationship with somebody who likes to play games with you, take your time, make you emotional, make you upset, that person has got to go. Number 10, when you interact with them, it's all about them. All about them. They talk for two hours and you get two minutes. Now I've mentioned a relationship that I was in for many years, many years. 
over 20 years with somebody where this happened all the time, all the time. I call it holding the bucket. I was always holding the bucket and she was always filling the bucket with her stuff, her needs, her thoughts, her ideas, usually her complaints, her problems. And I would be there to listen, to give advice, to help her in any way that I could. But then when it came time for me to share about what was going on in my life, well, I got to conclude the call. Oh, I got to go. I got something else to do. Or I'd be able to speak for about a minute and then that was hijacked and it went back to being about her. And at the end of the conversation, I'm just standing there holding a huge bucket of heavy stuff. After a while, holding somebody's burden and not being able to release it. And after a while, being in a relationship that is not energetically reciprocal, it's not healthy, it doesn't involve you. Why then are you in it in the first place? I have to tell you, getting out of that relationship was one of the best things I've ever done for myself, the most healthiest thing that I've ever done for myself. And once I did, my life took off. If it's all about them, they gotta go. 11, they mock you in slight or profound or outright ways. They make fun of you and they say, oh, come on, and it's just joking. Very similar to the one we just went through where they're needling you or condescending to you or they're being passive aggressive. And then when you call them on it, they say, I'm just joking, I'm just playing, come on. What are you, why are you taking it so seriously? But they mock you and so as you talk, they'll be <laughs> I had people in my family who used to do this. I was a very dramatic little girl. I liked to put on plays. I liked to sing in front of people. And most of the people in my family found that endearing as one would with a little girl, but some would mock me and laugh at me and make fun of me. And when somebody would call them out on it, or when I would say something, well, that hurts my feeling. Well, I was just joking. I didn't mean that, honey. Of course you go ahead and do that. But no, they're really putting you down. People who do that are people who are scared of their own light. They are scared of not having enough of their own talents and their own gifts. And so when they see you shining, when they see you eight-year-old Crystal tap dancing and singing your song, they're quick to mock you and make fun of you because they don't have the courage to do the same thing or to express themselves in the same way. And while that's sad, don't waste your time on people who are dedicated to mocking you in this way. They gotta go. Number 12, they are aware of your belief system and they look for ways to explain why your belief system is wrong. So they know you hold something dear. Maybe you're a vegan, maybe you're a Christian, maybe you are whatever it is that you are and they know this is sacred to you and they look for ways to talk to you about why it's stupid or they talk to you about why you shouldn't believe that way or they look for ways to put you down for having faith in the things in which you have faith. My father used to do this to me all the time. In fact, when I converted as a teenager to Christianity and I became a Pentecostal, y'all, snake wrangling, slain in the spirit, crazy, Christian, my father was aghast. A scientific man, he was shocked that I would become, as he would call, a sub, what did he call me? Oh gosh, I forgot what he called, but he basically called me a cult member. I mean, I don't know that he was that wrong, but he, he would make fun of me all the time and he would always challenge my faith. And to some degree, this is okay. Like it's all right to be in relationships where people are challenging the things that you believe, especially if what you believe might not be in alignment with your highest good. You want friends and support system people there to challenge you sometimes, but when they go out of their way to challenge you over and over about something you believe in strongly, then they're just trying to tear you down. They're not trying to help you. My father, while I was away at school, would erect elaborate altars to other gods. Gods he knew would, would offend me. And then I'd come home and I'd see all this that he'd do, and he just loved to challenge me, and he loved to mock my beliefs, and he loved to talk down to me because I dared to believe in something that he thought was ridiculous. And if he were still alive in this day and age, well, of course, that would not fly. Boundaries, he would not be able to do that. But as a kid, it's a bit harder. Is there anyone in your life, though, that mocks your beliefs? 
as New Agers, as spiritual people, as shifters, we're all in, interested or into a variety of different things, some of which can be a little wacky kooky, right? But it's interesting. We like learning about ETs or channeling. We like talking about source energy and frequency and outsiders might think we're in a cult or they might think there's something wrong with us. Is there somebody in your life who loves to challenge you, break you down, call you out for your beliefs? If so, they might have to go. Number 13, when you stand next to them, the energy in your body shifts in particular. Your abdomen and your chest tightens, becomes dense or heavy, or you feel literally sick. There are people in our lives, these are usually the ones that are on the down low, that are actually damaging us, but we don't know it with our intelligent mind. But the body, which always talks to us, and the body, which never lies to us, will communicate when they're doing us harm. And it usually shows up in the area of the abdomen, which is, of course, what we would call the gut, right? We say, I'm listening to my gut, or I feel that in my gut. There's a reason that we say that. It's because the body often uses this particular area of its instrument to communicate to us. So if you're in somebody's presence, even if you wouldn't suspect that they're bad for you, but your body is feeling sick about it, your body is feeling heavy, there's a constriction in your throat, in your chest, you feel nauseous or like there's a pit in your stomach, pay attention because that person might have to go and your body is the one that's trying to help you out of that relationship. 14. They relate to the world from their perspective only. And when you try to enhance their perspective with your own experience, which you should be able to do, of course, in a relationship, they dismiss it entirely and they typically talk over you. It's all about them. It's all about what they have done, what they have seen. It's all about their experience and their belief system. And when you try to come in, in a relationship capacity, just to have a conversation or just to talk things out, they dismiss you entirely. They don't have a regard for your beliefs and they talk over you. This is them not caring about you. This is them not wanting to hear your perspective or to include you in equal measure in that relationship. And if that's the case, they gotta go. Last but not least, number 15, they hijack your conversational contributions. You begin a story about this or that and then they interrupt you and relate your story about something you were doing to something that happened to them, making it now their story. And the next thing you know, you're not even in the conversation. This is again what that friend of 20 plus years would do to me all the time. She'd get those two hours, me holding the bucket, I'd get two minutes, but every now and again, I'd try. I'd try to insert something about myself, a need that I had, hey, can we talk about this? And she would hijack it, co-opt it, turn it around, and make it about her. And soon we were just talking about her again. This is a sign that you are not in the relationship to the degree that the other person is. You have a smaller share in the relationship. It's not equal. And if it's not equal, it's not healthy. And if it's not healthy, it's not supporting your spirituality. It's not supporting your path. Now, this is based on an article that I wrote years ago in my blog, and somebody actually told me, wow, Crystal, that sounds judgmental. Who are you to say that these people shouldn't be in relationship to you? Maybe you can shift them. Maybe you can open their eyes. Maybe you can change them. How judgy of you? And I'm like, no, hon, no. Didn't Jesus Christ say to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. You're bumming me out, dude. You're real negative right now. I got things to do. I'm on a path here. I'm going in a direction. Get away from me. If you can't be with me, then you got to get off this train. We have to, as spiritual people who have come here at this particular time in Earth's history to do something super important. We have to have the bravery and the courage to populate our relationship garden with people who support us at least as much as we support them. People who are perpetually happy for us and who wish us well. People who cheer at our achievements and people who want to listen to our perspective just as much as we cheer them on, just as much as we listen to them and love them. And if they don't, that means they are 
sidetracking you to some degree. They just are. They are delaying you. They are delaying your progress. And sometimes they are keeping you from your path and your purpose entirely. I said at the beginning of this video that we'll talk about what to do with these types of people at the end. If, as we've been talking about these 15 character traits of people who's, who have got to go, you started to think about people who matched these profiles, some of these people sound awfully familiar to you. Maybe you're married to one of these people. Maybe one of these people is your parent or a coworker or a mentor. But if, if you recognize some of these kinds of people in your life, then you've got three choices. First choice, do nothing. Do nothing and let their energy talk to your energy, meaning let their energy change your energy, which will delay you, sidetrack you, and in some cases, keep you from where you're going altogether. That's your first choice. You could do that. It's free will. Your second choice is to moderate your exposure. This is the first one we usually go to. We don't usually go to eliminating people entirely. That's the next one. We usually start with moderating our exposure first, meaning if I'm spending five hours a week with this person, let's cut that way back down to one hour. Let's give me more time with supportive people. Let's give me more time to do things like spiritual practices and disciplines and get out into nature and meditate and produce and create. Let's reduce our time with these people who are damaging us and maybe that'll solve the problem. We all have those people in our lives, typically our family, and they don't necessarily thrill us. <laughs> Let's just say that. They don't, they don't necessarily thrill us to be around them, but we can be around them and still hold our light and still be in our love and still remain positive. I mean, if we spend more time with them, that might shift. But if you can moderate your exposure and still take care of yourself, then try that first. But for some of these people represented in this list, it's not going to be possible. It's going to be like that friend that I had for over 20 years. It just wasn't possible. In fact, I tried to moderate my exposure first because I wanted to preserve that relationship. I loved that girl. But as soon as I tried to set the terms, terms which would include me in equal measure, as soon as I tried to make it energetically reciprocal, she was the one who pulled the plug and said, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. No, nope. if that's the way you feel, we don't have to be in each other's lives. And it crushed me at the time, but I bounced back. I didn't just bounce back. I bounced back and I came into the stratosphere. I am living my best life, y'all. And I wouldn't be able to do that if I was spending 20 hours a week on the phone with that girl. That's not an underestimation of the time. I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to make this video for you if I was still languishing in a relationship that was burdening me and holding me down. And so that relationship came down to elimination. Now, over the course of years since we parted ways, she's come back around and attempted to get back into relationship with me. Like, let's be friends again. And, and the last time was actually quite recent. And I love her very much. And I wish her nothing but well and success. And I truly mean that. But I said, I, I can't. I, I can't. My life is a demonstration of how much the shift in our friendship needed to happen. And I wish you well, but I got to take care of myself. And I refused. And I did the right thing. And it's time now for some of you out there to also do the right thing. Protect your path. Protect the reason that you're here. Protect your energy. Protect your mood. Protect your spirit and your vibration. If you're hanging around people who are bringing you down, then those people have got to go. Much love, guys.